In presenting the rules for negative exponents and zero exponents, I'll assume you're familiar with the rules for positive exponents. In fact, we preserve these rules when we include the rules for negative exponents and zero exponents. In particular, we'll be working with multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. And when dividing like bases, you subtract the smaller from the larger exponent. And I'll start out by looking at our original division problem. In particular, x to the fifth and x to the third, I'm going to ignore these coefficients because they don't concern us for the rule that we're developing. So here we have x to the fifth over x to the third. And I'll use this to develop the rule for negative exponents. Well, x to the fifth can be written as x to the fifth over one. And this x to the third in the denominator can simply be written as x to the third under one. So from here to here, I've preserved the meaning. Now based on our rule for dividing like bases, we would cross out x to the third so long as we subtract 3 from 5. So the x to the fifth is preserved. And instead of writing 1 over x to the third, I'm going to say times x to the negative 3. Remember when you multiply like bases, you add exponents. So this gives us and my preference is to write this with one sign. And the result here. So the rule for negative exponents comes from here and here. That is, x to the negative third is equivalent to 1 over x to the third. Notice this is now positive. In effect, when you have a negative exponent, you can interpret that as meaning take the reciprocal of whatever I'm attached to. I'll be going over many examples of this. And now at this example, we'll look what happens when you have a zero exponent. Following the pattern I used above, this denominator x to the fourth, I'll be rewriting the numerator and denominator. So the numerator I can write as x to the fourth over 1, and I can say times 1 over x to the fourth. So I can say x to the fourth times, presently x to the fourth here, the purple one, is in the denominator. If I want to move it to the numerator, I'm going to change that to a negative 4. And when we're multiplying like bases, we add exponents. But rather than having two signs in front of a number, I'll write it with one sign. This gives us x to the 0, but we know from back here that something over itself is equal to 1. So for the 0 exponent, the rule is anything raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. If you'd like to think of something to the 0 power as 
something over itself, that's fine. But the takeaway is anything to the zero power is one. Now I'll go over some of the situations that you'll encounter with the zero exponent. And then a good number of situations where you encounter the negative exponent prior to going over about a dozen examples with mostly negative exponents, a couple with zero exponents in here. So these four examples across the top are going to work similarly and they're pretty straightforward. 7 raised to the zero power is equivalent to a 1 r raised to the zero power is one. Here you have negative four but it's within parentheses and the exponent applies to the parentheses. So this is equivalent to one. Even if it's much more complicated you still have the zero exponent applies to the parentheses so you can basically ignore what's in here and it becomes one. And these examples down here are a little more involved. You need to be careful. The zero is touching the three and exponents take charge. So this three to the zero becomes one. But this negative sign just drops down. So that's your answer. Looking at this example, x to the 0, well that's 1. This negative 5 drops down. And remember it's multiplication. You have a number next to a variable. And obviously this gives us Over here, we have y to the 0, so that becomes 1. The 6 drops down, and remember this is multiplication. And we have plus z to the 0 is 1. Well, 6 times 1 is 6, so the result is 7. Now we'll look at some examples with negative exponents. Remember the negative exponent effectively means take the reciprocal. So this is equivalent to 1 over 4 squared. Notice it's positive exponent now that it's in the denominator. And 4 squared is 16. Now over here, it's x to the negative 2. So this 4 is going to stay in the numerator. I'll work sideways with these. But x to the negative 2 shifts to the denominator. Now it's positive exponent. This is your answer. The practice in mathematics is to write your answers with positive exponents only unless you're dealing with scientific notation that will be the next video so whenever you have negative exponents you need to rewrite it with positive exponents and now down here we have n to the negative 3 so 7m to the fifth that's going to stay in the numerator and n to the negative 3 shifts to the denominator and the exponent becomes positive. Looking at this example we have our negative exponent in the denominator but that means take the reciprocal. So what you end up with is 8r to the 6 still in the numerator 
and s to the negative 4 shifts up to the numerator and becomes s to the positive 4. We took the reciprocal, it was in the denominator, and now it's in the numerator. I don't have to put this over 1 because that doesn't affect the value. If you want to see how a negative exponent in the denominator ends up in the numerator, I can show you with this example, but it's fairly complicated, so in general, you'll just move it across the division bar and change the sign of the exponent. I'll rewrite the original expression. And this is equivalent to showing the reciprocal of s to the negative 4 Notice this is a positive exponent now because I've taken the reciprocal. And now this is equivalent to this 8r to the 6 will remain in the numerator. But what we have here is a complex fraction. So when you divide by a fraction, you flip this, take the reciprocal, and multiply. So times s to the 4 over 1. When you're multiplying fractions, it's helpful to have all fractions. I can show that this can be written as a fraction. Simply put it over a 1. And now this is equivalent to which is what we had here. So this is how you show it explicitly. Usually what we do is just take s to the negative 4 and, so to speak, push it up to the numerator and change the sign of the exponent. Unless using scientific notation, an expression is not considered simplified unless all exponents are positive. Looking at number 1, we have a negative exponent. It applies to the parentheses, so we'll take the reciprocal of whatever's inside. Now the exponent is positive. But really, anything over 1 is simply itself. So I don't need 7 over 1. I can just write this as 7 and I really don't need the parentheses squared. Well, 7 squared is 49. I want to mention this problem could be written in a slightly different form with the same meaning because this numerator is a 1. So this 1 could be raised to any power and it would still be 1. So this is really saying the same as this. Again, we have 7 to the negative 2, so that means take the reciprocal. So you would have 7 squared in the numerator, but I don't need over 1 because it doesn't change the value. And this is 49. Looking at number 2, we have a negative exponent. It's attached to the parentheses. I could send in the negative 2 to each exponent using the power rule, but in this case it looks easier to just take care of this guy on the outside first. Um, I want to mention the way I proceed isn't the only way to do this, but since almost everything in here is positive, I'm just going to take the reciprocal of everything inside 
to change this to a positive. And now we have everything in here raised to a positive 2. I still have a negative exponent inside. So this x to the negative 5 is going to come up to the numerator. And become positive. We still have 3 and y in the denominator. Everything is still to be squared. So using the power rule, when I raise to this second power, I multiply each exponent in the parentheses. Remember, that's 8 to the first, 3 to the first, and y to the first. So 2 times 1 is 2, 8 squared. 64, z to the eighth, x to the tenth, so this will be 3 squared, which is 9, and this will be y squared. Looking at number 3, there's no exponent out here to worry about, but we have a couple negative exponents inside. Also we have q to the 0. q to the 0 is 1, so I'm basically just going to cross it out. If I have 1 times anything, it doesn't change a value, so I can just take care of that. p to the negative 7 will be going to the numerator r to the negative 5 will be heading to the denominator. So this will become r to the negative 5 becomes r to the fifth and then r to the fourth. Uh, these parentheses really aren't necessary so I've decided to remove the parentheses and we'll proceed. Now in the numerator we are multiplying. We have like bases so we simply add the exponents. The denominator we're multiplying. We have like bases. We add the exponents. Looking at number 4, we have a negative exponent. So we'll take the reciprocal of everything in parentheses. But now it's simply raised to the third power. It's no longer negative. So we'll be using the power rule. We'll multiply each exponent. Remember, that's 2 to the first. I'll go ahead and write this in two steps. So you have 2 to the third power, u to the 21st. But normally we would go ahead and calculate this out. 2 to the third is 8. I won't always show this step, but it was easy to show you in this instance. Usually I'll go from here to here. Now looking at number 5. Again, we have our negative exponent outside the parentheses, so we'll take the reciprocal. And 
now this is raised to the positive 2. We'll be using the power rule. And remember, this exponent applies to everything in parentheses. So I put the negative 4 in parentheses to make sure when I multiply 2 times 1, this is contained and I include that negative. And we'll have s to the 18th. So negative 4, the quantity squared, is going to give us an s to the 18th again. You don't have to show this. You don't have to put these parentheses here. But you do have to understand that this even numbered exponent is going to give you a positive value here. If this had been an odd number, you would end up with a negative value here. Looking at number 6, we have a negative exponent here, we have a negative exponent here. If I send in this negative 3, this will become positive because we're multiplying. So this would be a positive 18. But t to the 0 I can eliminate because that's just a 1. But this 5 would then be 5 to the negative 3. So I think I'll take care of this negative first. And while I'm at it, this t to the 0 is 1, so I can essentially forget about it. So we have 1 over. So that value is still negative. But this exponent of 3 is now positive. I never make this line long enough. Huh? Now I need to take care of this negative exponent. But I can't just push this up, so to speak, because I have this exponent out here. So I have to distribute this first to free up what's inside. Remember that's 5 to the 1. become 5 to the third u to the negative 18 and this value has to move to the numerator five to the third is 125 I certainly don't have to write the one next to the u to the 18th. It's understood to be there. Referring to 7 and 8, again I want to say the order in which I proceed is not the only way to simplify this expression, but it's my preference. You could send in this 2, so to speak, using the power rule and multiply each exponent, but you end up with kind of large negative values sometimes and I'd rather just clean up all my negatives as quickly as possible. So x to the negative 10 will be heading to the numerator. y to the negative 8 will be heading up there and y to the negative 9 will be heading down. So x to the negative 10 becomes x to the 10. y to the negative 8 becomes y to the 8. And this is all over. y to the negative 9 becomes y to the 9. Now this is all still raised 
to the second power, but I'm going to clean up what's inside parentheses. So these x's are multiplying. We'll add exponents. Gives us x to the 14. And with y to the 8 over y to the 9, I can cancel that out so long as I subtract 8 and I'm left with y to the first, or simply y. All still raised to the second power. Multiplying exponents, we have x to the 28, y to the 2. Looking at number 8, my choice is going to be to send in this negative exponent because I have three negative exponents inside and when I multiply they'll become positive. So again we're multiplying this negative 2 times each exponent. So we'll have x to the negative 8, y to the positive 18, x to the positive 20 and y to the positive 16. Now I just have this negative exponent to worry about. So x to the negative 8, this guy's heading for the denominator. It'll become x to the 8 times x to the 20 and you know I could clean up these y's because both exponents are positive so I'll cancel out y to the 16 subtract 16 and be left with a 2 so we have y squared in the numerator and these two x's in the denominator, well I shouldn't say two, we have x to the 8 and x to the 20. That leaves us x to the 28 in the denominator and y squared in the numerator. Looking at number 9, um, we're to multiply parentheses next to parentheses. Um, we do have some negative exponents, but we'll go ahead and multiply because when we multiply like bases, we add the exponents. Like bases, we'll simply add these exponents. And then after that, we'll deal with the negative exponent. So 6 times negative 5. m to the 3 plus 7 n to the negative 4 plus negative 2 so I'll just clean this up that's a negative 6 and we can't leave the expression with a negative exponent. So we'll have negative 30 m to the 10 in the numerator. And n to the 6 in the denominator. 10a and 10b are really the same you're multiplying like bases so you add exponents you have like bases so you add exponents so first 10 a and that's plus 5 or positive 5 however you prefer to say it and let's clean this up so Combining these two's in negative 7, 
positive 5 leaves us with a negative 2 and we rewrite this as 1 over y squared. Looking at 10b, we have 2 to the 4, negative 7. So this gives us 2 to the negative 3, which is 1 over 2 to the positive 3. And normally we would rewrite this as 1 eighth. Looking at number 11, uh, we have to be careful here we're adding. Um, this is the only problem in here where we're adding uh, the bases. Um, but first we've got to deal with these negative exponents. So 4 to the negative 1, that's 1 over 4 to the positive 1 plus 6 to the negative 2, that's 1 over 6 squared. 6 squared is 36, so we have 1 fourth plus 1 over 36. In order to add fractions, you need common denominators. So the LCD is going to be 36. This doesn't have to change. But to get from 4 to 36, multiply by 9. Do the same to the numerator. And now we have, that'll be 1036. And if it's even over even, it can definitely be reduced. Divide by 2. You can divide by 2. Half a 30 is 15. Half a 6 is 3. So you have 18 in the denominator. If you would like practice with the concepts I've just covered in the video, as long as you're at my website, I have two worksheets, each with a detailed answer key.